Ever since the original Division game launched back in March 2016, we have been treated to a unique storyline and plot that in large part has been brought to us in short fragments via comms and echoes. Through the collection of these comms and reconstruction of echoes, we have been able to somewhat piece together what happened both in New York and now in Washington, D.C. So today, I wanted to bring you my top 10 favorite comms and echoes for The Division 2, along with a short summary for each. It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer back with another Division 2 commentary, and today I wanted to try a different style of video than you are used to on my channel. Now don't fret, I will have plenty of build guides, weapon reviews, and thoughts concerning changes for the Division 2 uploaded to my channel in the near future. But since our game relies heavily on these past memory fragments to fill in gaps in the storyline, I wanted to upload this countdown to what I thought were my most memorable comms and echoes. So without further ado, let's get this countdown started. My number 10 selection is a comm entitled Black Box, and it's an exchange between the Air Force One pilot and an air traffic controller from Joint Base Andrews. Overall, the delivery of the dialogue is not the greatest, but I chose this comm due to the gravity of what happens within it. Air Force One being shot down was featured in all of the Division Two trailers, and this is essentially where our story begins. Joint Base Andrews, this is Air Force One on approach. Do you copy? We read you loud and clear. Welcome home. I've got you on a bearing of 100 at 16 Angels over. Ah, uh, sounds about right. Gonna alter course to the southeast, heading 150, then come around and Parker. Sounds good. It'll be good to... Wait a minute, what's that? Uh, Andrews, what are you reading? We've got a SAM. Evade. Evade. Uh, c copy that. I, I see it. Initiating evasive maneuvers. Sh shit, we're, we're not gonna make it! Air Force One? Air Force One. Mayday, Mayday! This is Air Force One. We have a missile impact and are going down. Repeat, we are going down. We are not Not all of my choices for this countdown are serious, and my number 9 selection is an echo that is found in the pool just east of the Lincoln Memorial entitled Vigilantes. War brings out some interesting changes in everyday civilians, and for these three aspiring superheroes, well, all I can say is they've got a long way to go. Make sure to check out the ID text for the full picture of just how lost these three truly are. Disease. Vexed by violence. Afflicted by affliction. Heroes arise. Villains topple. Bystanders stand by. Dude, what the hell? Sorry, man, I'm struggling a bit today. It's okay. We're a team. When one of us stumbles, the others stand strong. For justice. For liberty. For a better tomorrow. That's more like it. We haven't really heard anything of substance from or about Dr. Gordon Amherst, the original author of the Green Poison Virus, since the original Division game. My number eight selection is a comm entitled Gordon Amherst Recording 118, and it is essentially a preamble to his net results in the original Division game. Dr. Amherst lays out his vision for natural selection and how mankind should stop interfering with it. Now, if you think about it, this moment in time is both revealing and disturbing, especially since we know the horrific outcome. That's so interesting, Professor. Long-term survival depends on evolution. The common cold used to cull the weak. Those who survived were stronger and went on to breed the next generation, and so on. Darwin? Sure, but you see, we short-circuited this evolution. We develop drugs that keep those who should have died from dying. We've artificially propped up the weak for over a century. So, what's the answer? Eugenics? <sighs> Not at all. I don't think we should have any 
choice in who lives and who dies. Humanity can't be trusted with those decisions. People will always find a way to game the system, to capitalize on it, to commodify it. Like Big Pharma. Exactly. An entire industry devoted to keeping sick people artificially alive in order to exploit them. The more pills you take, the more money they make. More people overcrowd the planet, and more people pollute the world. It's not sustainable. You're right. It's not. You're kind of a genius. I'm just a guy who sees the big picture. My number seven selection is an echo simply entitled Orphan, and it features a lone little girl who seems beyond frightened as she is coming to terms with her new reality. Her mother lying dead in the next room from exposure to the green poison and now surrounded by outcasts, she maintains a brief conversation between herself and her doll, and she voices both points of view with a chilling vocal delivery. Hostiles, guarding location nearby. You've been a very bad girl. I'm going to tell Mommy. You can't tell Mommy. Mommy is sleeping. Mommy isn't sleeping. She's just pretending to sleep so she can hear you when you're being bad. Mommy is sleeping. She ate a magic apple, and now she won't wake up until a fairy prince kisses her. When Daddy comes home, he's not going to let any fairy princess kiss Mommy. Yes, he will, because he's friends with the fairies. <laughs> Shh, it's the plastic people. They don't know we're here. <laughs> My top 10 could not be complete without a selection from Aaron Keener, the original antagonist rogue division agent from New York. We've only seen or heard small fragments of Agent Keener as he has entered and just as quickly exited our timelines. However, this calm, entitled Hometown, gives us a chilling look into what we may be headed towards in Episode 2. They say home is where the heart is. And they also accuse me of being heartless, which I guess means I'm homeless. Either that or they are full of shit, which I consider to be much more likely. Still, New York, why come back? I honestly don't know. Maybe because it's the heart of it all where this brave new world of ours got started and I want to stay close to the center of things. Maybe I got tired of seeing the same crap everywhere else I went. There is nothing majestic about the aftermath in some you know, bedroom community in North Jersey. Uh, new York, on the other hand, well, there's still something magic about it even in the middle of all this. It's enough to keep you coming back. Although short in overall length, my number five selection is an echo entitled Savannah's Echo, and it is from the very end of the National Zoo mission. This brief but powerful glimpse into Emmeline Shaw's past tells us all we need to know about her twisted transformation from mother to faction leader. See how the mama bear has watched us? She's making sure we aren't gonna try to hurt her baby. That's what mothers do. Washington, D.C. is a savage place ruled by savage factions, and nothing embodies that savagery better than my number four comm selection, Missing Prisoners. For these factions, killing is not just a necessity for survival, it is sport. Hearing the joy in this hyena's voice is disturbing and really embodies the total disregard for mankind and sheer enjoyment these factions have for killing. Where's the prisoners? I got tired of them moaning. So you let them go? No, I didn't let them go. Motherfucker, we were going to trade them. Oh, well. That's what you're going to tell Diesel when he asks why you killed them? I didn't kill them. The dogs did. What dogs? I don't know, some dogs. I didn't ask their fucking names. Oh, but they must have been fucking hungry. Because damn, once they sniffed blood, it was chow time. You stupid son of a bitch. Well, whatever. Diesel ain't gonna do shit except huff and puff a little.
My number three selection is a com from the newly introduced Kindley College Missions, and it was part of a three-part podcast narrated by Eve Garcia, a student at Kindley College before the outbreak. This vocal delivery is something completely different than any other we have heard in the game to date and really reflects a strong socio outlook, gender inequality, and a bit of pent up rage all mixed into one stirring vocal drama. Welcome back to Kenley Cast, the only podcast that's still casting. I know we've talked about some of the weird shit on campus like the obelisk, I mean, could there be, like, a more phallic symbol just hanging out in the quad? We get it. You were a men's organization. You need the penis beacon to light your way. It's just super weird. But, like, not as weird as the fact that there's, like, a church with a crypt on campus. Like, wh- why is there a crypt? Who's buried in the crypt? Is a crypt a crypt without bodies? Like, if the crypt doesn't have bodies, is it just a basement? And, like, if we get high as fuck and try to hold a seance in the church basement, is that, like, super weak sauce compared to holding one in the crypt? But it's weird, right? And, like, I've gone to the library and tried to research the shit, but like a bunch of the golden architect shit that's just embedded in the floor and walls, the college doesn't really want you to know about it. Oh, and, like, the statue that's in front of the library. That, like, weird silver lady? You know why that's there, right? Some chick in the 70s got tired of staring at the big dick in the quad, and so she was like, we need a naked chick to counterbalance that shit. That's some white feminist nonsense. Like, not to body shame or whatevs, but just throwing a naked silver lady that blinds the fuck out of you on sunny days in front of the library does not offset the huge marble dong that you can see from space. And I swear to God, sometimes if the angle is right, that obelisk is, like, right between her tits and she's grabbing it and, like, the mirror reflection titty fucking thing is, like, so not what the artist intended. I probably shouldn't smoke and then record this podcast. Good thing this shit's not live. My second selection is an interesting com entitled Taking Charge, and it features the Speaker of the House, now President Ellis, and an unknown benefactor. Now, we have already seen his motives and desire for power, but this conversation adds a whole other layer to this narrative line. I'm sorry, miss. I'm not sure what this is about, but I believe I've done everything that was asked of me. Nobody thinks otherwise, Mr. Ellis. That's reassuring. As soon as the capital is fully secured, it will be time for you to step forward and take charge. I'm ready. I'm sure you are. I'll be in contact soon. In my humble opinion, the best set of comms or echoes in the game feature the leader of the outcasts, Emmeline Shaw. This once prosecutor and mother, now turned rogue faction leader, displays a human who has completed the journey towards rageful vengeance. These two comms, Savannah and Condemnation, give you all the knowledge required to understand what broke this woman and who she holds responsible. Hell hath no fury like Emmeline as she began her purge of any and everyone responsible for the death of her daughter and illegal confinement of the infected. Where's my daughter? Ma'am, step away from the fence. Just tell me where she is, please. What's her name? Shaw. Savannah Shaw. Shaw? She's in the morgue. No, that can't be true. Look, I'm sorry, truly, but you need to get back. I'll kill you. All of you. Ma'am, I have orders to shoot anyone who approaches the perimeter. All of you! What are we supposed to do now? Seek justice. How? Relentlessly. And without mercy. We were victimized. But we don't have to remain victims. We were imprisoned, but we don't have to remain prisoners. You can say whatever you want, but does it mean we can do anything about it? Our enemies are right across that river. They tore us away from our families, locked us in here, starved us, deprived us, assaulted, and murdered us. But it's not just them. It's also the ones who signed the orders, who decided this was an acceptable solution. And it's the ones, all the ones, who stood by and let it happen, doing nothing. I want justice, and so I condemn them, all of them, and I will not rest until they are punished. 
So there you have my top 10 comms and echoes in The Division 2, and I look forward to reading your thoughts in the comment section below. If you could take the time to rate the video with a thumbs up or down, it would be appreciated. While you are here, please take a moment and pound that sub button, and remember to click on the bell icon to receive all notifications for content postings to my channel. You can also follow me on Twitter for all my latest updates, including anything Division related, and look for me over on Twitch with weekly streams. Until my next video, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.